You always have consent with the like button. Dead leg. Big news of the past 24 hours is that Louisville has hired Milt Wagner in a director of player development and alumni role. They're bringing a former Cardinal back to campus. Worth noting, Milt Wagner is the grandfather of DJ Wagner, the number one recruit in the class of 2023. So now Louisville is considered by most to be the favorite to land DJ Wagner. Dead leg. Your thoughts. Uh, it makes the interesting race for DJ Wagner all the more interesting here. Um, as you wrote, I mean, this is Kenny, Kenny Payne beating Cal at his own game. Not that Cal would Cal have been able to do this anyway. Milt Wagner, Louisville man. He couldn't have hired. I mean, he theoretically could have, but unlikely he could have convinced Milt Wagner to a similar type of role at Kentucky, right? Louisville and Kenny Payne had an inherent advantage in this regard. Cal couldn't pull. The I mean, move I, 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 the may, maybe. But let me add, Milt Wagner once was hired by Cal at Memphis. And in the time Milt Wagner was playing college basketball in the 80s, Memphis was one of, if not the biggest, Louisville rival. Okay, there we go. I was so what raised we, on the Metro Conference. So what are we doing, John Calipari? <laughs> Sleep at the wheel? What happened here? What's going on? It's super fascinating, man. Listen, DJ Wagner, when he gets to college, is going to probably be one of the five to ten best players in the sport once he gets there, no matter who he's suiting up for. And this is, you know, in advance of what will be an interesting live period in July recruiting. You know, you have, you have all the grassroots circuits, Under Armour, Adidas, and of course, Nike, which is highlighted by the Peach Jam, which will be in mid to late July. Um you know, Milt Wagner is not going to be on the road recruiting, although he will be on the road to watch his grandson. So in effect, uh, Kenny Payne will also have the advantage of having uh, a fourth person on staff in the gyms when DJ Wagner's playing, because by nature of him being, you know, hello, his grandfather, he'll be able to, uh, he'll be able to go and watch. And that's certainly uh, an interesting advantage. It comes at a time when, Duke is obviously killing it on the recruiting trail. Kentucky is coming off of a pair of seasons here where the fan base is just, you know, GP, we talked about this once they got knocked out of the tournament uh, in March. Uh, there is some consternation. Uh, and, you know, John Calipari's tenure isn't going to hinge on whether or not they land DJ Wagner, but man, oh man, be a lot better if he did than if he didn't, right? And for a while, it's felt as though um, Kentucky has been uh, the favorite. I I'll note when I spoke with, uh, Sarita Wagner, uh, DJ's mom. And I talked with, uh, I talked with Dewan as well last summer. And I even caught up with Sarita, um, late fall, early, early winter. Uh, they had always maintained that, um, you know, the recruiting process was not as they're very, very, very savvy people. And obviously Dewan having gone through this process is really understands it. They'd, they'd maintained to me that it was not as, uh, it really was not as what it was being perceived in terms of there's really three or four schools that are actually involved. Uh, and I'm going to take his mom at his word. Now, maybe that's changed in the five, six months since I talked to him since. Um, but yeah, Paris, this sets up for what will be an interesting summer. And I don't know what the timeline is for DJ to commit, but you would have to think by doing this, Louisville uh, certainly should be considered uh, side by side alongside Kentucky to be uh, most likely uh, to land DJ Wagner at some point here. For what it's worth, I talked to Travis Branham at 24-7 Sports yesterday, and he considers Louisville to be the leader. He thinks DJ Wagner is going to, like his grandfather, uh, be a Cardinal. And he actually had switched his or made a crystal ball prediction uh, back in mid-April for DJ Wagner to go to Louisville because, as he told me, he was hearing then that something like this was going to happen. And so now here we are. Um, for people who might be unfamiliar with the history of these relationships, with this story and how far it dates back, let me walk you through it uh, real quick because I, I lived through um, all of this stuff and was pretty up close to it. Uh, so back in uh, September 1999, John Calipari was officially announced as a member of Larry Brown's staff with the Philadelphia 76ers. This is after John had been fired uh, 23 games into his third season with what was then the New Jersey Nets. So he's tight with Larry Brown. They go way back. He considers him a mentor, and Larry puts him on staff with the Sixers. Again, this is September 1999. A at this point, uh, John knew that this was a one-year job because he had already made plans to return to college basketball. 
um, you know, after the 1999, 2000 college basketball season. And he was basically going to take whatever the best job available that he could get was he was coming back to college basketball. And, um, just before the start of that season, the Memphis coach Tick Price was forced to resign because he was having an inappropriate relationship with a student. And Johnny Jones, who went on to be the head coach at North Texas and LSU, uh, was named the, uh, the 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 interim head coach. And it started to be talked about very early in that season, like December, certainly by January, that Memphis was targeting John Calipari, and he was you know very interested in being the Memphis coach, in part because Larry Brown was once very close to becoming the Memphis coach. And ultimately turned the down turned down the job but as john tells the story when he was asking larry about memphis larry said you should take that job so jeffus coach and in that season while working with the sixers he started spending a lot of time um, just across the delaware river because pennsylvania and new jersey because i'm an expert in geography Mm -hmm. uh, this expert Capital city Car- of New Jersey. Caracas. Piscataway. Oh my gosh. Newark. Thank you. Yeah, I've been in Newark. I've spent time in Newark. Third time's the charm. I thought it was Caracas. So here, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, separated by oh, trivia time. Separated by what? A border. Uh, n- Yet, I guess technically, but also a body of water. What is the body of water? Mm. I know the city on the body of the water. What's the city in Pennsylvania? Well, Philadelphia. Well, Camden. Camden is in New Jersey, you idiot. Mm. <laughs> what's, this, what's the body of water? The Delaware River. All right. There we go. That was a low point for you. It's it's my fucking birthday. I mean, I'll just, you know, I'm 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 all over the place right now. All right. There we go. Have sounds like somebody stayed up a little too late. Not on exactly. birth uh, on birthday eve. Not even a little. Happy birthday. Thanks, man. How old are you today? 28. Number 41, my man. 41. I want everybody watching on YouTube to look at us right now, both of us, and realize I'm only four years older than that guy. (laughs) Looks like sounds like somebody takes sounds like somebody takes looks like somebody takes care of themselves a little better than the other. But at least I know Camden is in New Jersey. (laughs) That was outrageous. I knew it. I just I blanked on it. Continue with your Cal story. So Cal's working in Philadelphia. 15 minutes across the river is Camden, New Jersey, where a young man named Dewan Wagner is establishing himself as the most dynamic guard in the country. So Cal's establishing that relationship. He gets hired at Memphis in March um, 2000. And uh, within a couple of months of getting that job, more or less, he hires Milt Wagner in an administrative role. Also offers a scholarship and ultimately enrolls Arthur Barclay, who is Dewan Wagner's best friend from Camden High in Camden, New Jersey. Um, so John has set this thing up, and it became obvious very quickly Dewan Wagner was going to be a Memphis Tiger. And so in June of 2000, Dewan Wagner commits to Memphis, uh, subsequently enrolls at Memphis, and is really good as a freshman, but somehow, some way, go look at the roster, you'll never figure it out, that team missed the NCAA tournament. Won the NIT! Your 2000, um, and I, I mean, your 2000, 2001, uh, or 2001, 2002, rather, NIT champions, uh, those are your, your Memphis Tigers, led by Dewan Wagner. So John's had relationships with this family and the people around this family for literally more than two decades. Um, among the other people he's tight with that are in this circle, William Wesley, uh, Nick's executive, who at that time, you know, I, I would sit with Wes every day in the Finch Center 
uh, on campus at Memphis and practices as I was the beat writer um, for the Commercial Appeal newspaper. And he was just Uncle Wes. He, nobody called him World Wide West. That was not a thing then. He was just Uncle Wes. Uncle Wes. That was Wani's Uncle Wes. And so John's got that relationship with Wes, relationship with Milt, relationship with Wani. And he's known DJ since he was a baby. So for a while now, I don't know that anybody's called it a lock, but it's been just sort of understood in basketball circles that uh, DJ Wagner was almost certainly going to end up playing for John Calipari at Kentucky, playing for John Calipari just like his father played for John Calipari. And it's always interesting to me how these things work because nobody thought Chris Mack was not going to be the head coach at Louisville Mm -hmm. heading into the 2022-23 season in the summer of uh, DJ Wagner's last summer before his senior year of high school. So you're not even really thinking Louisville is an option here. I mean, I guess it's technically an option, but not a problem for Kentucky as it pertains to DJ Wagner. But Chris Mack resigned midseason. Louisville had a coaching search, and they did what Georgetown has done, what Michigan has done, what Memphis has done, and that's hire a famous alum to run its program, and that is Kenny Payne. Kenny Payne was a member of the 1986 Louisville basketball team that won the national championship. And on that team with Kenny Payne was Milt Wagner. Kenny Payne and Milt Wagner um, are tight college teammates. When Milt talked about Kenny yesterday, he said, I, uh, you know, I'm so thrilled to be working side by side with my brother. When Kenny Payne talked about Milt, he said, I am, I just love the fact that my brother's on staff. They call each other brother. Uh, However long John Calipari's had relationships with his family, Kenny Payne's had them longer. And now Kenny Payne has set himself up um, to land the number one recruit in the country uh, in in DJ Wagner, um, in part because he's very good at his job. Like I think Louisville would have probably been in there no matter what. But when you hire DJ Wagner's grandfather and you bring him to staff, um, This is the type of thing that worked for John Calipari two decades ago, and it appears like it's the type of thing that um, is going to lead to to Louisville beating Kentucky, to Kenny Payne beating John Calipari um, for the number one recruit in the country. Um, Again, I want to make this clear. That's not just my opinion. Um, That is what most recruiting analysts seem to think right now. Last time Louisville beat Kentucky – for a top five to ten recruit, like a clear race. I don't know. I went for a run. I was, went for a run this morning, trying to stay young. You want to know why? You want to know why you look like that and I look like this? Cardio, my man. Cardio. And as I was on that run, I was like, "When's the last time Louisville won? It might have happened recently, but of this level, this is great for college basketball, man. This is this is how you uh, keep the rivalry stoked, keep it going." Um, You know, I would never count out Kentucky personally. I wouldn't. But this is as much of a perceived advantage uh, in a recruiting race like this uh, as you could possibly get. And for Louisville fans, man, what a big one. I mean, even just winding up in this situation to begin with, you mentioned the Max stuff. He resigns midseason. And to be a Louisville Cardinals fan here at the end of May, when, yeah, Kenny Payne hasn't coached a game yet. You haven't even gone through one full off season yet. But so much, man, we we'll talk about not maybe a full 180, but a good like 150. Like the optimism for this program heading into next season and then particularly the one after that, which would be when Wagner would be in uniform for Louisville, if indeed he does commit, is uh, is big time. I think that's really, really good. Um Carolina effectively ended the Duke Carolina rivalry. I say it in jest. I say it in jest. Um, but uh, but between that and now Kentucky Louisville getting you know its next phase, its next stage, it's going to be interesting. Do you happen to know? I don't know, man. I'm trying to think. And someone I know, I know everything. Delaware what River, Delaware oh. River. Mm. Isn't it the Delaware Water Gap technically? I don't know. It looks like a river if you're looking at it. I looked at it yesterday. Okay. All right. All right. Fair, fair enough. Uh, it looks like yeah. a river. I'm gonna call. It. It looks like a river. I'm gonna call it a river. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. But yeah. No. This is big time stuff. Big time. And 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 great on pain for getting this done and adding Wagner to the staff. Um. 
I thought there was still like a, a bit of clarification that was needed uh, in regard to um, Milt Wagner actually being on staff and being a, a paid member of the university and how that ties to. Uh, I, I, I believe um, they they were smart about this. Um, it's not an official basketball staff position. OK, it's more of a university position. So the rule is and this was changed at some point. Uh, because when John Calipari, let's just connect all these dots. When John Calipari hired Milt Wagner, it was like an administrative role on the basketball staff. And then DeWan Wagner enrolls at Memphis. And that's the way these things had, had typically worked over the years. Um, like John Calipari also at Memphis hired somebody tight with Tyreek Evans, just in a whatever role. And then Tyreek Evans enrolls at Memphis. And so the NCAA came in and said, all right, enough is enough. Back when the NCAA you know, had rules and tried to enforce them. Remember those? Remember that? And 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 so exactly. the NCAA said, "We're not going to do. We're not going to do this anymore. Um, if you're going to hire somebody, they have to be one of your three on the road assistants, and then you can still recruit people they have relationships with. But you can't just invent a spot for somebody who's the parent or brother or cousin or friend of a of a, a prospective student athlete. Hire them and then get the student athlete. That's that's extra benefits. We're not doing that anymore." Um, so Louisville would not have been able to hire Milt in the same role that Memphis once hired Milt. That would be against current NCAA rules if there are still NCAA rules. Uh, so what Louisville has done is, you know, they found a, a loophole like everybody else does, and they have uh, hired Milt in the type of position that will allow them to still, you know, within the rule book, recruit, pursue uh, Milt's grandson, DJ Wagner. So my understanding is that's all good to go because Louisville was smart about this. Which, by the way, is if you're a Louisville fan, should be a very yeah. good sign. I'm always impressed by coaches who know how to work around this stuff. And though Kenny Payne is a first-year coach, uh, he's worked in college basketball for a long time, worked for John Calipari at Kentucky. So this is um, an indication that he, he knows what he's doing. As we speak right now, and maybe this uh... – <laughs> well, uh, I went to his 247 page for DJ Wagner. Uh, there are four Louisvilles and two Kentuckys, although one of the Kentuckys is Brian Snow, who no longer works as, as an analyst. <laughs> uh, you know, I, to, to Snow's credit, he's not exactly required to do this anymore because he is the director of recruiting now at Penn State. So, um, but Adam Finkelstein, Travis Branham have Louisville. Uh, Chris Fisher, who works with Cat's Paws in the 247 Network, which is a Kentucky site, still has Kentucky as his prediction, but he also has an enough. What, what if you clicked that? What if you clicked on that page and it was okay? There's four, there's three Kentuckys, no, three, the four Louisvilles, one Kentucky, and a Penn State. I wonder who's got DJ Wagner going to Penn State. Oh, it's Brian Snow. I didn't <laughs> anticipate to see Snow's name when I brought this thing up, but sure enough. <laughs> There he is. By the way, Brian Snow's 2023 accuracy, 0%. Because oh, he he's, bad. <laughs> he's lost his fastball. Zero Come on, percent. Snow. Get something uh, right. Get, get something right, me. Snow. Gosh, Snow. Get it together, man. Uh, but, you know, yes, I, I can't wait to uh, to see Wagner again on the trail uh, this summer. And then, yeah, I, he's... I, I I know he's he's considered the best prospect in the class right now. I think that's fair. I think there's also maybe an emerging debate over whether that will change later this summer. Regardless, really, really heady, confident combo guard who I just think he's going to step into college and be a star. He looks he looks awesome, and Louisville could uh could have a butt. We'll have to wait and see what happens later this summer. Well, if this gets uh, more intriguing and in what Kentucky can do to to kind of try and get him there. Memphis is technically also listed among like the three most likely. Uh, and you never know, I guess. But we wait. We wait to see with uh, with Memphis and everything that's going to come down the pike with Penny and that program from an NCAA standpoint. That'd be an all timer for Penny Hardaway. Oh, my gosh. Like, are you t I <laughs> Kentucky uh, John coach Dewan Kenny hires Milt and Penny's like, I'll still get the, I'll still get this done one way or another. <laughs> Uh, that would be yeah. awesome. That would be incredible. Man. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, I, listen, there's a, I, I guess a whole summer of, of, of grassroots basketball where these players will be evaluated and, and ranked and re-ranked and shuffled around. Um, I, I think at the end of the day, DJ Wagner will be the number one prospect in the class of 2023. You remember I, I got, uh, I found myself in a bit of controversy last summer 
when we were at Peach Jam, and after like two games, I was like, uh, "Are we really sure Jalen Duran is is uh, is is the number one player in the class?" Because what that usually means is a guy who looks like a, a possible number one pick in the draft, and I can't imagine. Um, not not because he's not awesome, but because he doesn't look like um, a modern NBA prospect. Uh, you know, in terms, he looks more like a traditional big instead of a modern big. And I can't imagine that guy would be considered for the number one pick in the draft. And people are like, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, have you looked at a mock draft lately? Uh, Duran is, I, I said he's going to go close. My prediction last summer, he'll go closer to 10 than one. Seen a mock draft lately? Might not even go in the top 10. Might go in the top 10. Might not, though. When I saw Jalen Duran, I didn't see, I wasn't convinced this is the number one player in the class or that it should be the number one player in the class. When I saw DJ Wagner, I was convinced. I was like, he, now he looks the part. Awesome in transition. Like every, t- felt like every time I saw him get the ball in transition, he scored. Every time. I, I know that's not true. It, it just felt that way. Like nobody could stop him from getting to the rim, making jumpers reliably. Um, you know, I, I don't know that he's a better prospect than his father was, but, you know, he might be. And his father was awesome. Went on to be the sixth pick in the 2002 NBA uh, draft. So I'm a believer in DJ Wagner. And, you know, if you told me I had to hire somebody to get him, I would hire somebody to get him. He's he's terrific. And and I'm with you. I think we'll be one of the five, ten best players in college basketball the moment um, he starts playing college basketball. Uh, can we get one thing straight, though? Because I, I, I tweeted about this yesterday that I decided to write the column because it's just sort of like there's a lot of juicy stuff there. And, and you know, because I lived it, I sort of know the background of this. And um, so I was like, I, I'll write a column about this. So I wrote the column. You can read it at CBSSports.com. And it's amazing how many uh, people wanted to remind me. Well, you know, John Calipari hired Milt Wagner back. Like, do you really think there's any scenario where I don't know that John Calipari hired Milt Wagner once upon a time? Like, what, what are we? What are we doing beyond that? <laughs> like, I mean, I like forgot what? about the Delaware water gap. So <laughs> like, people are like, hey, GP, um, you, I mean, you realize John Calipari hired Milt Wagner at Memphis. What? I had no idea. Like, what is it? What? Is, how do you get to a point where you, you're on Twitter following me, which means you have to be somewhat aware of who I, of, of who I am and what I do? And you're compelled to spend part of, like, even a minute trying to tell me something that you have to know I know. What? Twitter's wild. Did you know Penny played at Memphis? I don't think you knew that. What? Yeah, I don't think what? you knew that. What? You so claim to have grown up on the Metro Conference. I was raised on it. Okay. Anyway, what point are you getting at here? Try to tell a story about Bimbo Coles. Oh, okay. That's not true. So you had that from some fans, and then I got some other Louisville fans who read the tweet, and they're like, why, why are you trying to make this out like they hired Milt Wagner to get a recruit? They hired Milt Wagner because he's a former Louisville great, and this is the type of position that goes to for players all the time. Why don't you tell that story? <laughs> All right, let's stop for a second. I'm happy for Louisville because I th- I think it's I think Louisville being great at basketball is great. I in, in all sincerity, I was raised on the Metro Conference and Louisville was a massive part of my childhood. Louisville basketball was a big part of my childhood. Purvis Ellison, Lafonso uh uh what's my what's my uh, Lonzo Ellis? I was about to say Lafonso Notre Ellis, Dame, but that's, my man. That's Notre I Dame. I just met oh my god, what is that player's name? Somebody put it in the comments. Uh, no, I thought you were raised. I what thought way? you were raised on this conference, on this team. Purvis Ellison. Who was my other guy that I'm trying to think of? Uh, Francisco Garcia. Fraudulent. I was raised on the Brenton Mexican is family. the capital of New Jersey, not Newark. Fact check I, correction. I think it's Caracas. Ah, Edgar Sosa. Give me some old school Louisville basketball. Oh, uh, Le Bradford Smith. That's what I was yeah, trying to get to. The, the guy who trash talked Jordan. Okay. That's, yeah. All right. Le Bradford okay. Smith. But Chelsea Lafonso Ellis, too. Nice guy. Why not? 
Let's get something straight. I'm happy for Louisville. Just like I keep saying, John Calipari has known Milt Wagner for two decades. I've known Milt Wagner for two decades. I love Milt Wagner. Happy for the family. But Milt Wagner left Louisville 36 years ago. <laughs> he coached at Memphis 22 years ago. Louisville could have hired him at any point. True. The, point where, the point where Louisville hired him was in the summer before his grandson, who's the number one prospect in the country, became a senior in high school. So, like, nobody's mad. Nobody this isn't even a thing anymore. It's like, not even a thing. It's not even, it's it's not even like a thing. Why, if you don't do this, you're negligent. Kenny Payne should yes. have been fired if he didn't do this. Let's be honest. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay? He should have been so nobody, fired. Now, it is funny because when, when John hired Milt at Memphis in, you know, whatever, 2000, that was, like, controversial. Like, oh, I, I, used to, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. it used to be, like, uh, I can't believe what these coaches are doing. Right. Uh, like, I went, I, yesterday, you could Google this. It was a New York Post column, and it was, like, John Calipari's up to his old tricks again. <laughs> John Calipari just got back to college, and here he goes again. He got UMass uh, in trouble, and now he's already hiring the father of the number one recruit in the country. So, like, this was a thing then. It's not a thing anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody thinks it's cheating. Nobody thinks it's wrong. Nobody's out there going, I can't believe what Louisville did. So just enjoy it. Celebrate it. Be thrilled. 